engineer, so I'm just like, gear. <laughs> um, and uh, I'm sorry, I'm texting Alexis Tipton like I won't see her in an hour. Um, <clears throat> so uh, the way a moment with Terry Doty works for me, he's like, <laughs> um, the way the solo panels work for me is I like to talk about randomness, whether, regardless of whether or not it's anime. Um, in the past couple panels we've done today, like women in voice acting, we talked about the industry, how to get into it, um, demo reels. Uh, although the women in voice, I don't think we ever really you know, did anything yeah. specific to ladies and being a lady in the industry. So if you want to, I'm down to talk about anything. I think we have to keep it uh, family friendly. Uh, if you listen to that anime show on my podcast, you know that that might be a little difficult for me at times. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, I also have an incentive. I do adore questions. If you have a question um, and I ask it, I will give you a ticket. And at the end of my panel, I'll do a little drawing and you'll get a little something, something from yours truly. Yay. Um, and it, uh, it's actually anime related for a change. So, there you go. Like the first couple ones I did, I gave people like all the shampoos from my room throughout the convention. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody, the guy's like, oh man, I've been watching hot chocolate all weekend. So I found another <laughs> one and just threw it up. Um, so I have questions. Um, I like being random. I think I've already said that, but it bears repeating. So what do you guys want to talk about? Tell us something quirky about yourself. Quirky. I had a zombie wedding. I got a call. I got an email back saying, um, "Are you available Friday to work on this one show?" And um, I couldn't because I was going to Boston that day. Out of all the days of the year, I was gone that one day. So I replied back really fast. I was like, "I'm sorry, I can't be there. I'm sorry, I'm sorry." And then she replied back, "Okay, thanks anyway." So I was like, "What does that mean? Okay, thanks anyway. Be okay, thanks anyway." Fine. Yeah. <laughs> so, what do you think I should do now? I feel, like, I feel like I've disappointed somebody. Well, okay, the thing to remember uh, whenever you get called in for funny is uh, whenever you get called in, you get booked or asked to be booked by a director, and the talent coordinator is the one that books you. She's not the one that asks to book you. So, you don't need to worry. Like, when I first started, I'm like, is Tara mad at me? Because I haven't heard anything in a while. Yeah. Um, and now she doesn't even call me. She texts me. Are you free, <laughs> like, in two hours? How did you know? Yes. <laughs> uh, or like I was in Tokyo, it's also on a panel. I'm like, can you come in for an audition tomorrow? I'm like, no. <laughs> um, it's like, that's for you. I'm like, but, but I, cannot, I can audition another day. No. <laughs> the whole time that you're in, in Tulsa, those are the only times that you can audition. I'm like, okay, well, maybe I'll get something. So the, 
director, whatever show you were asked to come in for, the director is the one that called you in, and hopefully they'll call you in again. And because generally, whenever, like, as a director, I called someone in and they couldn't make it, I will say that if you get on Tara's donezo list, as in she is done trying to contact you, yeah. uh, she communicates that to the director. Like, there was someone that I really wanted for this part, and she called him, his agent, and like another number, and sh and he never responded. So she interrupted a session to be like, I've tried to call this person, they are not responding back, and I do not like him. <laughs> and I was, do you want me to just try to get somebody else? She's like, I would appreciate that. <laughs> and he's never been called in again. So don't go on the dozo list. But um, I'd say, you know, like, you know, know your boundaries, don't like, be like, hey, if they called you in and you weren't able to make it, chances are they're calling you again. Okay. That's my assumption. I mean, don't like, don't, like text me or text me. It'd be weird if you text me because you don't have another phone. <laughs> <laughs> like, put on Twitter, like, so what's the deal? <laughs> you not to me, Tito. It's all your fault. <laughs> it's all your fault. That's so sad. Yeah. But just hope that they call you in again. Give me a little ticket. I hope. Thank you. Learn. Thank you. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, um, girl, and then. No. <laughs> oh, is that your question? Like, oh, um, no, like I had another question, but. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, so so really, even though I'm more funny, I technically do not represent them. I just yeah. point that out as I'm at a convention talking about the roles that I Anyway, um, I was wondering, okay, so I missed the other earlier panel that was supposed to be like women and women or whatever. Um, women! And you, get, you said that you guys didn't actually cover stuff about women? Well, I'm sorry. So question. So, um, my voice is this low. Mm -hmm. I can get mistaken for a guy on Skype. It's hilarious. Um, <laughs> yes, I get to I actually love that. Yeah, I love it. It's hilarious. I get to kill people. Um, but, like, would my voice be, like, good for voice acting or whatever? Like, I, I mean, it's a, uh, you know. Diversity. I can, like, go upwards in range about uh, an octave and a half. The thing about it is, uh, you know, being able to do voices is great. Being able to maintain certain voices is better. And the way that you're going to practice that is, you know, practice like you probably have, all of you probably have voices that you, you don't know you have yet. Like, I didn't know I could do boy voices until I was making fun of another actor. <laughs> <laughs> Which is Sean T from Big Wine because he's super apologetic often and says, oh, I'm so sorry, I'm sorry. And Ian Sinclair is like, give him food. <laughs> like, or what? Like, I need to cast this little vampire kid in, in the vampire bun. I'm like, well, play a little boy? And somehow, even, like, Eric Bale's like, and the kid is, is black. How'd you make him sound black? I'm like, what does that mean? <laughs> He's playing a kid. <laughs> I'm like, I think someone's just racist. <laughs> Or do my room. Uh, I was like, no, you're wrong. I'm like, no, it is kind of like, no, you're wrong. You don't know what you're talking about. So shut up. Um, and so, <laughs> so when I play women, the rare times that I do, um, I play like Virgo and Fairy Tale. She's super high, and I never thought that I would be able to talk like this. And I can actually go higher now, but she's really easy for me to do. And then in the same show, I play. Jalal, the younger version of Jalal, and that's ridiculous because now I'm playing boys and high-pitched chicks, and I thought I was a really low and clearly sarcastic voice. So I'd say, yes, you're fully capable of voice acting. Just um, record yourself and figure out like really what's going on with the voice and being confident in your abilities. Yeah. Come here, we'll take it. I need like a minion. Take it, minion. Well, see, if you think your son, she just whispered, and I'm totally calling her. She stage whispered it to me so I could say it. But it sounds terrible. You don't, but 
you have a, like, it's me too. I'm like, oh God, it sounds so bad. And my husband would be like, if it sounds so bad, why did you get cast? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you might have a point. I do have a point. I'm incredibly intelligent. Okay, uh, you, you sir. All right, um, I am actually a little unfamiliar with your work. Uh, uh -huh. Oh, it's, it's, it's like, no, I, I, I literally don't watch anime, so I'm just curious. What, 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 what roles have you done, right? <laughs> but yeah, what roles have you done? Um, this is where I upload like my anime news network page. Uh, I'm a Fairy Tales version. Uh, Kami gets what a rookie and Corpse Princess, or I like to say like she's like. Yes. Uh, wasn't uh recently Chris Guerrero in Fairy Tales? Uh, he just uh, I think made his debut in Part Five. Yeah. I know the guy. I know the guy. He's really cool. Like, yeah. yeah, I like. Um, I know of his work. I've never officially, and I sometimes like when he pops up, like we've met several times. I suck then. I'm sorry. But um, <laughs> I've never officially met him. But like we we chat back and forth on Twitter, which is you know the new way of this is too. Really against social. Um, <laughs> like yeah, yeah, we totally talk and we'll see each other. Anyways, your work. Huh? Uh, anyways, your work. I yeah, yeah. Oh, Chris Pratt. We would talk about Chris Pratt. Yeah, this is going to become a Chris Pratt panel. Oh, I mean, we should tweet that. Chris Romero is amazing. Quote, Terry Doty. <laughs> <laughs> he was here today. Um, <laughs> like the one person. Thank you. Um, yeah, he was here today? Yeah, I think so. Good. I'm glad he's gone. <laughs> so, um, I, mean, I actually just started uh, noticing his voice because my husband's an ADR engineer for Funimation, so he's like, that's Chris Romero. That's good? Okay. That's Because he didn't do nothing wrong, because uh, it makes me angry. Because 
I initially gave it yes. I initially hate the enemy, but I gave it a mixed review because um, it's not like Six Flags or other music friendly friendly music. I don't know. Because because it's like Six Flags lately. Teddy Cameron McKenzie, what happened to us? Prisoners got killed. Call it a solid horror film franchise, and if you're an SPN, it's not prison break. Ah, well, I mean, hey. I, I maybe it's a biased opinion, but it's awesome and the chicken plays with Hara is really hot. Um, especially when she's wearing glasses because she refuses to put on makeup that day. Yeah. <laughs> like right now. Um, <laughs> you want your little ticket thing here? Yeah. It's gonna be a little ticket. Ticket! Thank you for your question. Yes. Um, I have yet to watch the movie. Thank you. Yes. Um, I'm in high school right now, and like, what should I do for like preparing for like voiceover work and stuff, and how I find auditions and that kind of stuff? I don't know. That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, chewing gum. How? Like, speaking of like high school theater, like that's like rule number one. I shouldn't be chewing gum right now. It's not a characterization. Um, <laughs> that's what all the signs and uh, <laughs> the class said. Um, for me, you know what I wish, and I talk it like I still talk to my theater teachers from high school, because um, it turns out we end up knowing a lot of the same people. Like Mike McFarland's, like Angela says hello. I'm like she was my theater teacher in high school. He's like, oh my god, I'm so old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are. <laughs> um, but uh, I wish that they talked about voice acting because most of the stuff that I do. He's playing off of my old theater, you know, my old theater training. And since then I've done, uh, since my beginnings in voiceover, I've done a lot of uh, voice classes. Uh, if you're local to the Dallas-Fort Worth area, I do. Um, you look at workshops that are in your area. There are some great voiceover artists that do workshops around here all the time, like Betty Zoller, Bob Michaels. Um, Betty Zoller, like, she's a, uh, I, I've, I've read some books, and she's been mentioned in them randomly, and I saw she was doing an intensive copy interpretation slash, um, I think, character development workshop, and it turns out, like, her and I have the same agent, and she's like, you have my agent? Like, why are you at this workshop? I'm like, you never stop learning. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, oh, you know, other people, that you, you do voice acting already? No, no, I wish. <laughs> okay, okay. So, like, um, the best way to do it, like I was telling uh, uh, her, is practice already. Go ahead and start listening to yourself. I wouldn't know exactly, uh, people ask me, like, where would I audition for Funimation? And the thing to remember about Funny or any other dub studio is it's a niche market. So, unless you live in the area, of course, there are LA actors that are established that travel, and also they travel on their own time. Most studios don't pay for you and do something because you're self-employed as an actor, ha-ha! And that big paycheck, don't worry, the government will take a big chunk out next year <laughs> <laughs> to remind you that what you do is more like a hobby. Um, a really expensive hobby. But <laughs> people are gospel like you guys know. Um, <laughs> uh, so, I think for funny they say, like, you can submit online, blah, blah, blah. Uh, like I mentioned in the women in voice acting thing, or I think a few of us did, uh, demo reels are great, but train, don't, uh, don't do a demo reel, just hurry up and do one, because a bad one is going to hurt you just as much as not having one. Um, be ready, do your research, listen to people uh, that you trust about feedback, because you're your own worst critic, <laughs> the voice, yes, any, well, pretty much any time in your life, you're your own worst critic, but listening to yourself, Sometimes you can hear things that aren't there and kind of have like a voice image issue. <laughs> like with me, I thought my voice was really low and blah, blah, blah. And it turns out most of the time when I go in, I don't use my natural voice. Uh, but when I do commercial work or I narrate books, that's me, you know, just reading you a story. And so I have to be very comfortable with what I do or what's the point. Um, so where you would go, uh, some people have agents. I had an agent. Uh, for a year and a half, and she was giving me all the wrong auditions. And what I realized I did was I got an agent just because I really wanted to be like be with my friends and say I was signed with an agency, and I got the wrong agent. 
um, which some people don't seem to think about is this person's representing you. Uh, you're not representing them. You're represented by them, yes, but you know, you don't pay them. They get a percentage of what you make. And it became, hey, I keep getting auditions for realist, like, because there's character stuff, which is what most of us normally do, which is, you know, like, you get to play 12 year old boys, but if I, you know, get an audition for Met Life, they don't want a character actor, they want, like, a real 12 year old boy. Or if they're asking me, they want, like, a real 30 year old woman. 29. Uh, but, <laughs> um, uh, or, like, I can, you can slightly age your voice, but they, they want real, real people. So, what she was sending me, was, uh, was things that I just was not right for. Like Betty Zoller, who's this amazing woman, she's been in the business for over 40 years. Um, her and I were represented by the same person. She's not even with her anymore. And I was like the youngest person in the agency. And I was one of the only people out of her voice department getting work. And most of that work I got on my own. So she wasn't even getting a cut of the stuff that I was doing. Um, and one day, a uh, little story, story, story within a story, but what I'm saying, uh, I'm telling you this just so learn from my mistakes. Because it's a funny story now, but when it happened, um, I tend to, to kind of overreact sometimes, especially when it's someone being abrasive to me, because I'm like, am I, thinking that it's abrasive and I'm just being over dramatic. So what I do, my, my best friend is my husband. And so I send him stuff before I reply. Just I'm like, hey, am I being touchy here or is this person being a big female dog? <laughs> and uh, most of the time he's like, it's just you. Give it a couple of hours and then respond politely. Okay, cool. And this time, uh, he's these past couple of emails with her, I would forward the email that she would send me for an audition and send it to him. And be like, hey, I'm not right for this, right? But I would still do the audition. <laughs> Going, I'm just wasting my time, I'm wasting everybody's time, because I'm too young for this stuff. The stuff she's sending me isn't right, so therefore she's not the agent for me. And she also messed up my tax stuff, but that's another story. Um, I, uh, I sent her a reply, and I went, hey, thanks for this audition, but this stuff like something that I'm right for, so I'm just going to go ahead and pass. And uh, she's like, you don't get to play casting director, sweetheart. And if anything, it's good practice. I look forward to hearing your audition file. <laughs> I don't like being called sweetheart. <laughs> like, hey, like when I worked at Guitar Center, it's like, hey, sweetheart, like you call me sweetheart, I will crush you. <laughs> don't. Mm. But if it's like, hey, sweetheart, I'm like, hey, in that context. So I hit respond to send it to Steven, my husband, and called her very colorful language, and I did not hit forward, I hit reply. <gasps> oh. Oh. Very unprofessional, right? Oh, so what God. I did was I owned it. <laughs> I owned it. I'm okay, so by now you've probably seen the email that was on the uh, before I you know apologized. It was intended for my husband, who's my confidant. I'm very honest with him. I apologize for calling you that stuff. That being said, I'm clearly not happy. Your services will no longer be needed. And she didn't respond. <laughs> but I immediately saw that my stuff was taken off the website. I'm like, oh, look who's suddenly quick. <laughs> so since then, I've been a free agent, literally. Um, so if you're going to get an agent, do your research. Uh, your agent. Can, uh, getting an agent can definitely help you and also hurt you if you get the wrong agent. Um, or tell them off in a certain <laughs> colorful way. Uh, she's local, so I won't mention her name. But uh, I live here, I live in the Dallas Fort Worth area. But um, so uh, agents are a good place to start. Uh, workshops, doing workshops and doing classes, it's a great way to market because you'll, you'll be amazed at the people that you end up kind of seeing over and over again. Like, I got called in through funny because I knew a, a theater person that happened to be directing. And so he called me just because he knew that I knew a friend of a friend. And then they just were stupid enough to keep calling me back. So yeah. Hope that helps. Does it? It does. Okay. It can be a little ticket. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed my horrible story. No. <laughs>
Oh, um, she told us she said, Oh, whoops. <laughs> Give me that ticket back. <laughs> yes, you, the Rangers. Uh, well, let's talk about something a little bit more positive. What's the most. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we can be negative all night. <laughs> hey, she what's, the, what's the most fun that you've had doing this? Doing this? Cons, honestly, well, a lot. Of, it's a nice little perk. I mean, a lot of people that have been doing this a lot longer than I have have never been to a con. Me, I just I love hanging out. I love kind of being able to show off my geek rather than kind of go like, yeah, I kind of like zombies. <laughs> so like, I heard you like zombies. You damn right, I like zombies. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. When I met Romero, I wasn't like this. I was like, oh, fuck your movies. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> but uh, the most fun is, oh, I'd say cons is pretty high up there, but I love, I don't know, exploring my range. Uh, I have a lot of fun creating voices that I didn't know I had because you have to trust the directors that have cast you sometimes and stuff. That, like when I did Virgo and Fairy Tale, the first two episodes, she's a giant. And I have to talk like this, uh, basically like female bubble bill. And even then, it picks me down. And then two episodes after that, she's really high up, and that's just me. And I have no idea how to do that. And you know, creating characters is a lot of fun, but cons are <coughs> cons, characters, cons, characters. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> and also, you know, getting paid to uh, voice cartoons. In all respect, we love uh, we love when you guys come out and you uh, you know tell us things. I I enjoy uh, hearing things. I enjoy. Uh, I'm glad you're understanding. <laughs> 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 no, I'm I'm doing that. I'm glad you guys like it. You guys are actually listening to me. Suckers. <laughs> 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 Please take a little ticket. I will. Good. Yeah. Don't you looking now? <laughs> Give me that ticket back too. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm gonna embarrass my daughter, who is an aspiring film. Go on. Yes. But uh, as a mom, and I, uh, I was a sound engineer many years ago in Chicago. But I know that I'm gonna ask about pay scale, okay? Mm -hmm. Because I know that there's a set scale, but I have no idea where voice actors fall, who they, what, is there a guild you belong to, etc. Uh, as like a voiceover in the industry, um, agents kind of handle the, the pay scale uh, with um, with funny stuff, like because you're working with existing audio uh, or existing material, and you're not creating something, you're not doing prelay. Uh, the pay scale is significantly less. Uh, let's say that. And uh, but you know, like I can go in for something, you know, at Chris Sabat Studio, Ocatron, and do like a video game <laughs> and get. It's very well to do the same thing that I just did at Funny, but I'm doing an original character. Well, this, I, I guess my question relates to because I was familiar with um, session singers, for yeah. example, and they would get paid, you know, for an hour at right. least. Right. Like you have a, you have a set rate. Right. Like uh, when I do, because um, I produce and do my own thing, like I have a set day rate, um, uh, which is different for everybody in your experience. But as far as like dubbing, Stuff, uh, it's an hourly rate, um, which varies depending on uh, your experience. If you work less than 100 hours, you get paid this. After you reach that 100 hour mark, you get paid this. Although some people work with agencies, um, agents again are a really good place to have. They're like, my client will not come in for less than three hours at this hourly rate. Like, well. So there's room to negotiate. So yeah, there's room to negotiate. Um, like when I got signed with an agency, I was still at the lowest pay. And I'm like, can you at least do me a pay bump? Because I've been here forever. It's just, um, <laughs> I at that time, I hadn't reached the 100 hours. And they bumped it up just because my agent went, hey, can you get this? And I'm like, yeah. Like, That's all it took? Are you serious? But me and I think they're like, no, go away. So you're saying that there's no union that covered you guys? There uh, is Texas. <laughs> it's a right to us. Um, so Texas is a little different, you know, I talked to, uh, when we did the Women in Voice Acting panel, uh, Susan and Linda were talking about how in Canada you have to have an agent to do, to do voiceover work, and she's like, I'm baffled that you have your own studio and that you get gigs on your own. I want to talk to her more, that's interesting.
But um, so it's different for everybody, especially because it's Texas. Like I do, um, um, I do stuff for overseas stuff. Like I do a lot of voice tags for like DJs, and it's how many words is it, and what are you using it for? Like if it's well, I'm just using it for my demo. Okay, then it's this. Well, I'm using it to introduce myself at each gig. I'm like, okay, then that's going to be significantly more because you're using it all the time. Right. You know. Um, so I set my own pay, but I pay attention to what other people in the industry are, just so I'm not asking for, you know, like screwing yourself, going, well, at least this experience. Don't ever do something for experience. Nice. Or that's a ridiculous fee. <laughs> right. Um, so yeah, it varies from gig to gig and what that voiceover work is.
who they're gonna cast. There you go. Um, so what I do now is um, I just market myself like I'm always carrying business cards, and, and I end up finding gigs in the most random way. Like there was a friend who had a dentist office, and I'm like, well, I'm thinking about doing a radio commercial. I'm like, well, if you do, <laughs> um, I don't know what you're looking for, but if anything, I can recommend some other people uh, as I'm a shameless promoter that way. You have to, unfortunately, some people think it, it's douchey to do it, but you have to be able to sell yourself, not physically. <laughs> uh, like, it's just a voiceover game. It's not, I don't do it. Um, or something. Try it. I don't know. No, no, no. Family's on the line. No, 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 no. Um, Wait till the 18 and up panels, and then we'll, we'll, we'll get real about how some people got into the industry. But, um, <laughs> no one that I like hanging out with, so. But, um, for voiceover work? Wow. Did that <laughs> So, uh, you know, the, the stuff I get now, I've actually gotten gigs um, just because I was at a con and I was at a con in Vermont and a guy that I met in Vermont remembered me and so a few months ago he was like, hey, I'm, I'm doing a Kickstarter and I need voiceover, do you want to do it? I'm like, well, because I assumed it was like a con, like a con attendee dude that didn't know what he was doing. I'm like, well, I have a daily rate. Yeah, I know, that's why, that's what you need. Um, do you want me to audition for it? I mean, if you want to audition for it, uh, okay. <laughs> so I've been getting gigs just through word of mouth. Um, and like the overseas DJ stuff, I don't even remember how that happened, but now, you know, it's like, okay, the guy's like full on from Brussels, Germany, doesn't speak a lick of English, and you're like, well, that's why we have you. Cool. <laughs> like, I gotta go to Brussels now, and hear myself in a club. <laughs> DJ sidekicks, yeah. <laughs> like, just do a sexy voice. I'm like, it, it's American, you don't know. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, the, the gigs that I get now, like, I would I definitely think about getting an agent later, uh, again, the right one. But, because uh, there are some companies that don't want to work with you unless they know the agency, because they respect the agents, you know, they're. You know, like Sony only works with this agency in this area, or blah blah blah, or all that stuff. That definitely helps, but a lot of the gigs, once you've been doing this as long as I have, I've noticed in the past two years, a lot of the stuff outside of anime, on my own, I get just through friends of friends that are, and then, you know, you get the gig by auditioning for it. Or you just know how to be like, hey, just so you know, here's my demo reel, if um, you can think of anyone that might be interested in hearing it, again, might look douchey, so try to find a way to work it in organically. And I'm like, hey, hey, okay, now that we're friends. Um, <laughs> um, so, does that help at all? Okay, I'll take it. I'm a <laughs> Thank you, sir. Okay, cool, we have 16 minutes. What else, guys? audio, which is 
uh, ADR is automatic dialogue replacement. So if you're watching something like a live action movie and the lips don't match, it means that they messed up a line or the black mic or boo didn't pick it up properly and they go in and chase it to redo it. Or hey, we can't, my favorite ADR is uh, Galaxy Quest, where Sigourney Weaver's seeing the death trap, and she goes, screw this! And it's clear that she said, F this. But I'm like, yeah, because that totally looks like screw. <laughs> <laughs> That's bad ADR right there. Like there was uh, ADR, um, like there's a party scene. Clearly when we shoot a party scene, you can't have music going, at least not very well. And all that sound, and oh yeah, are you gonna go to J. Cruz later? Totally. Or, yeah, I'm not. All that stuff's ADR, walla, bits and walla stuff. Um, it's funny to hear how bad it is sometimes. Like, I have no idea what's going on. Maybe me either. Um, so there's ADR, tech, technically ADR, there's anime stuff, character stuff, you know. I grew up watching um, X-Men and Captain Planet and all that stuff. I'm like, man, I want to do cartoons. And then I watch them now, I'm like, I want to do better cartoons. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's great, but it's hard to watch now. Especially Gambit's Cajun accent. Oh, uh, all right, chill. Oh no. But um, so uh, there's commercial. Like you know, it's fun if you live in the area. You'll hear like Eric Vale on like Ace Cash, da da da, or um, Ian Sinclair, he's a spokesperson for Chop Top Casinos and Raising Cane's Chicken. And sometimes when I'm mad, I'm like, shut up, Ian. <laughs> Stephanie Young uh, doing like Subway, actually that was an on-camera gig, Subway commercial. Um, so like a lot of us do, you know, not anime stuff or we teach, but uh, pie chart wise, it's really hard to say. There's a there's something for everything, like narration or, you know, you go to a game and you get tired of this loop and you're like, please go to the, you know, the stand for popcorn and blah, blah, blah. Like that's a, more than likely a voiceover thing. It would be really weird if it's like, Karen, it's been two minutes, you have to say it again. Oh, come on. Like, that would be weird. So that's voiceover. So it's for everything. So there's something for everything. Like even like if you wanted to do like, Anime fest thing, you're like, please remember, shower at least once a day. <laughs> please, we recommend at least once, especially if you're in full body cosplay. Um, oh my god, what is that? It's me. Oh my god, it's me. But uh, so, pie chart wise, I have nothing, but there are a lot of different things you can do. Um, mm, yeah, like industrial stuff, you know. How to. How to not crush your foot with a board. <laughs> um, Did you narrate the voice my life? I use. Could you narrate my life, by the way? <laughs> do like a really depressive. Yeah. Oh, did he know? When, I do that occasionally, like whenever I, um, whenever friends go in, they're like, okay, I'm gonna, uh, my car's over here, so I'll see you later. Little did he know when he turned the corner. <laughs> Like, I'm trying to 
guess the password to my, my band, and the actor that played him was Canadian, and he kept saying, sorry. I'm like, oh, you didn't keep that? I would love to have like a Canadian wristwatch. Shut up, Canadian wristwatch. No, I'm, yeah, I'm from Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, not West Philadelphia. That's not where we face there. I did not spend most of my days on some sort of playground. Um, <laughs> Jimmy Catch me on a bad day, like, West Philadelphia, shut up! <laughs> you don't want my eyes. <laughs> or you're like, oh, we should go running up the stairs. You're like, that's nah, a good way to get shanked. Let's not. <laughs> not by me, but just, okay, I've had enough. But I was in Pennsylvania recently, and I, I, I do have certain words, like Tatum, my brother from another mother, always gives me crap about saying, He's like, your mom? <laughs> my mom. Or madre. How's that? <laughs> um, my mom, my mother, my life keeper. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, no, I'm from Pennsylvania, and I try to, occasionally, I've heard, like, because my husband's from Texas, I hear it, and I'm like, man, what if I go somewhere and suddenly I'm like, oh, you're from Texas, I don't know what I would do. I'd be very sad. Because I'm like, I've been working so hard, I'm not having an accent. My dad's from Texas, my mom's from Texas, and she's got a thick, like, Hispanic little twang. She's like, why? Why would you do that? Like, mom, that's what I'm saying, my dad sees. Like, so if I'm really mad, I'm like, oh, so that's what we're going to do. We're just going to do that. My husband's like, oh my god, you're going to favorite card, please. <laughs> I love you. Whatever I did, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to get a little ticket. And, okay. Yeah, let's see. We have time for one more question, and then we'll do a little draw. Thanks, sir. And we'll do a little draw. So, who has a question? Have you had like any funny moments or like random embarrassing moments, like in the booth or at a convention? Family friends are coming. <laughs> <laughs> the only okay, I'll tell you the latest one as far as cons is um. There's a reason I have this big lock on my phone now, and. Um, I, oh, Jesus. Um, yeah, it's that good. But there's a Tokyo and Tulsa, which is an awesome con. I hope I get to go back next year. Um, it's great. Uh, and the people that run it are great. Like, it's just all around fun. And they don't know where to work you. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Uh, both of these cons, actually, I keep forgetting Tokyo and Tulsa. It's so close. Or to, Tulsa's so close to here because I flew just to be lazy. Um, but they have party rooms, you know, so at the end of the day, like, there's a bartender that just hangs out and makes you whatever you want, and that's great, awesome. And there was this girl talking to Tatum, and I assumed that he knew her very well. I was wrong. I was being very nice to her, and um, I'm a horrible, shameless, like, joke flirt, and this was not funny. But uh, I was just like, hey, baby, what's going on? Blah, blah, blah. And she's just like, hi. <laughs> I went and got a refill and left my phone on the table, so this is really all my fault. Uh, she programmed her number into my phone and texted herself. So she had my number and she started texting me constantly. Like, hey baby, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm working. Thank you, bye. And um, it eventually got to the point where throughout the weekend, all of us were kind of like, what's happening? I'm like, I don't know. Like, I, I called my husband.
about to run over to do a Dance of the Vampire run with the panel with Alexis Tipton, which you guys should check out. Um, talks about this very awkward show. Um, but thank you guys so much. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>